Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Yes Users Podcast, where we dive deep into the mind of trailblazers and innovative thinkers. Today, we have a real treat for you. Our guest is someone who has been shaking things up in the marketing world. Hailing all the way from the vibrant city of Hyderabad, we have the Chief Marketing Officer of Adveda, Ram, none other than Ram Kumar. Now, Ram isn't your average marketing executive. He has a background in mechanical engineering. Talk about a twist in the tale. But he also have a knack for turning visions into reality. So buckle up as we explore his journey and maybe even a few laughs along the way. So Ram, welcome to Yes Users Podcast. Uh, thank you so much for having me on the show. So how nervous are you? Uh, pretty much, but I could say that. Why? Because, you know, this is my first podcast which I'm having right now. I know. I know. I've done my research. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I asked you, like, uh, how nervous are you? But I love the fact, like, you know, I, I love uh, breaking the podcast versatility. <laughs> but that's, that's fine because you know, until unless you know we are, we are not breaking that particular part yeah. it will be possible to have a conversation yeah, absolutely right and you know see this brings to uh, and as we were speaking earlier right your whole career journey and I think uh, a lot of uh, listeners would be able to relate to this right so right now you sound so confident right so but that wasn't the case right so tell us like you know how your personality has evolved over the years so basically when you know to be frankly like when i was in like college days you know i was completely a particular person who doesn't know anything you know how exactly to speak you know, i don't know how to you know speak in public or otherwise you know to ask something i used to go to a canteen and to ask a, you know a tea or a samosa or something like that but eventually what exactly happened is until unless you're not asking something no one will give you anything Okay, so that's what made me change the whole perspective of, you know, giving and taking. So now at this particular point, what exactly made me think is, you know, if I want to talk to someone, if I want to convince someone, whether it's a girl or might be my parents, now I have to tell them that, you know, this is my requirement and I want you to help me out. So that made me think, you know, a complete different way where if I want to, you know, uh, process in my life, then obviously I have to ask something. So this is what made me change. Yeah, completely makes sense, right? A lot of people uh, kind of like, you know, already, I think, start presuming that, you know, what other person will think about it or what other person will think of me. Uh, I think that's rarely happens. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned, nobody gives a shit about you. Everybody is so much preoccupied in their own life. Oh, shit, right. Right. Everybody has their own shit, right? And uh, if you are a beggar or if you are a multi-billionaire, <laughs> everybody is dealing with their own shit. Uh, so, yeah. So, was there any, like, you know, pivotal moment which, like, you know, forced you to transition from an introvert to an outspoken guy? No, outspoken guy. Yes, I would definitely tell you yes. Because uh, when I was in my college days, you know, I had this chance to, you know, express myself, you know, there was a Tibet competition which was going on and I not complete, you know, uh, to how exactly to speak up. And I used to write, you know, uh, basically I used to write poems and, you know, this was why uh, my passion towards it. And later on, people have told me that if you are so much passionate about this thing, you have to speak out. Until unless you're not speaking out, nobody knows that what exactly is running through your mind. Okay, so that made me change that, you know, I have to do this. So that is what made me to come out of that particular stone. Yeah, completely agree. But you know, uh, life is usually like a movie. Like, you know, one day the hero decides that he's going to change and the next day everything sorts out, right? But that's definitely might not be the case. So how was that transition, right? Okay, you have decided that now I have to be an outspoken person, right? But I'm sure it wouldn't have come easy in the initial day. Not in an easy way. Definitely, I would say that definitely not in an easy way. You know, I started struggling, you know, to start uh, to have a, you know, the first conversation from my end. You know, it was, you know, obviously, you know, it was every time a hard for me. So until always this person, that person comes and talks to me. Now, I will, you know, I will talk to that particular person. So I thought that, you know, what if I go and ask that particular person whether he is not going to kill me, right? So I will go over there and ask him this thing. So obviously, he's going to keep the answer for it. You know, if the way I speak, uh, you know, makes, you know, uh, sort of you know, 
possibilities where he can understand those things it'll be easy for me. absolutely so yeah thanks for sharing that story right the only thing i would like to add is that you know if you feel that way if any of our listeners is feeling that you know i'm an introvert i can't do that uh, trust me um, if you are young it's really easy uh, if you are old as me probably it will be a little harder for you but it it's not impossible it's never too late it is not uh, not too late you know until unless if you want to express yourself you know if yeah. you're not expressing then you are losing something that is for sure absolutely absolutely so yeah you had that transition then you graduated from your engineering college right yes. typically people will go for a software development role right or at was software testing or digital marketing role but you stayed uh, you jumped into sales so yes. why was this decision uh by profession i would say that by my educational you know qualifications i'm a mechanical engineer Okay, and you know we all know that we might have heard that only mechanical engineers can do anything. So, in to be frankly, the college days when I was in my college, so there was no placements for you know for mechanical engineers for my colleges. So I what I thought is if I want to give a transition of my career, I should you know come out of my zone and I have to search for it. So later on, I searched of many of the opportunities you know where I can showcase myself or something like that, and I didn't find anything similar to you know according to my skill. So later on, I thought that. No, uh, you know, I know I'm good at only speaking. You know, my communications are quite good, so that I know I will I'll drive for something else out. So later on, I went out. I started researching on myself, and later on, I find that thing out is, you know, you will get happiness when you start helping out someone. Okay, so I thought that. So that made me think about you know just we can go into sales and marketing. So sales is a good place where you know people can earn more 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 roles. So this made you know. money makes you know all the all the things so money made me go into sales basically and most of the time when i was in the initial stages or in some stage i told my parents that you know i want to get into sales and marketing they used to tell me that you know you can't go into sales and marketing because sales and marketing is a particular person who goes to households and you know they sell things so i later i told them no it's not like that it's an inside sales but i have to go over there so i'm good at this particular thing and i want to do this they later on they agreed for it and later on i have you know point for that yeah makes sense so it's this is really interesting so tell us like how did you landed up in uh, edtech or skill enhancement yeah, how did you land up in this particular niche so in first place it was never my intention to get into a edtech field or you know any skill enhancement you know a uh, job role or something like that the first thing is you know what made me to get into the sales and marketing role is of you know you will be having good pay good incentives that is a major thing which i have And later on, the initial stages, which I got placed in the particular company, was in edtech. That's a startup, basically. Okay. So out of that particular startup, what exactly happened is, you know, I started learning that. Oh my God, I haven't learned anything in my career when I was in my college days. Okay. Now at this particular edtech co, now this is providing those skill enhancement programs for those particular people who are not able to uh, learn something out of their you know spaces. You no, know, like obviously we all know this. You know, edtechs are particular field. Where they are improvising, you know, each and every day, right? So how, how exactly, you know, I can showcase myself, you know, uh, let's say that if I haven't learned anything in my career, obviously there are hundreds of people in the same college, they don't know anything. So I just want to help them, uh, you know, help them over there, those people that yes, you can learn something out of, you know, by learning this particular. Thing. That is what made me get into edtech. Wow. Sounds really interesting. I and trust me, I can relate to that because I've been also running an edtech business close to ten years now. So I trust me, I understand the ins and outs of it. Uh, one of the thing that I feel about edtech is more of a push product, right? Um, even though you will you will get like leads generate, you will have inbound leads, right? Yeah. Yeah. But at some level, you know, when you're charging money, it's a bit of a push product, right? And one of the the negative things about the sales, like you know, which is uh. i would kind of label it as a myth but one of the common misconception is that um sales people will just sell anything they don't care whether it's a dog shit or uh, as long as they are they getting their commission uh, they don't really care they so, don't really care that is true <laughs> and we can agree for that right so your two sense of helping people was a bullshit no no bullshit thing you know because of you know this was particular thing where all the people should get certifications and all this Obviously, yeah. it can be done through YouTube's or other you no know, platforms also. Yeah. Time where exactly you are focusing your talent up, right? 
So if it is a private firm, so what exactly happens there is they are teaching you and also they are making you to complete the projects of problem solving things, right? So over there you are getting certified also from YouTube or something like you are learning out from those particular platforms you are not able to get certifications of. So that is how. No, makes sense. Makes complete sense. Uh, so yeah, now the reason I brought this topic of your initial exposure to sales, right? <laughs> now you're working at chief marketing officer of at Veda, yeah. right? Yes. So how did that transition happen? Because CMO is not just uh, you know responsible for sales, well, right? They are responsible for a lot of other stuff. So how is that transition working out for you? So when I was in my initial days, you know, I started my career into sales. Okay. So the leads which I used to get from you know the Facebook leads or Instagram leads or the leads which I have to generate, okay. So if the leads which they are giving, you know, the from the company's perspective, and these are completely bullshit. Okay, but obviously we know that the target audience which are coming up, so we don't think that you know the leads which we get are uh, you know perfect target audience. We we'll get you know the audience from different places and different sectors also, where you know it made me difficult that. You know, I have to get my clients, which I have to call and get the sales also. Now, at the same time, what if I generate my own leads? Now, obviously, you know, if I'm generating my own leads, I'll get to know that the quality of the leads also. Okay. So, I started generating my own leads by, you know, getting into, you know, different um, medias and all this. Eh? So, literally, I started generating leads and I got, you know, uh, a 90% accurate leads where I get sales. So, that made me learn, you know, new aspects of marketing also. Because until unless if you're not generating a you know a quality leads, until unless it's a quantity, but if you generate a quality leads, you will get more revenue. So my perspective have got completely changed from you know making sales to generating leads. So let's say that you know if I'm generating a ten leads and if you know the sales person and the sales guy is converting in eight leads, then I'll be very much happy because my cost of generating those leads is increasing by the you know return also. So that is a No, very interesting. Um, and you know, one of the constant uh, hallmarks of uh, a sales shop is the rejection, is the repetitive rejections that you have to handle, right? I am on a every time, you know, because you know, each and every time if you start selling, or you know, if you want to tell something, also obviously, you know, we we have to come through, uh, you know, these objectives which all the people will come up, right? So, so what is your hack for not letting those rejections get to you? The target audience, you know, what exactly, if you have a particular product, right? Okay, you should get to know who is your target audience. Now, if you know your target audience, it will be easy for you to make him understand what exactly you're trying to sell him. You know, and also there is one more thing. Build a story behind what you're saying. Otherwise, if you're doing marketing also, build yeah. a story. Simple. Absolutely. I think the stories are the most powerful weapon in any sales guy. Right. Exactly. Um, uh, stories are more powerful than facts. Stories are more powerful uh, than a lot of times, uh, you know, the evidences or proof of uh, social proofs or a number of proofs that you can uh, produce. Uh, stories are a lot more effective than that. I think uh, that's that's one of my biggest learning uh, over the years. Yes. Very nice. So tell us about uh, Adveda. What is uh, you guys doing? What problem are you guys solving? So basically, Edweda is a you know, e-learning platform, and uh, you know we are giving you know upskilling programs with certification part, you know in collaboration with AICTE, you know which is a government body. Okay, and also from here, what exactly we are doing is the concepts which we are teaching for these particular students. These are from engineering colleges, and you know those farmers background and all these people, the management background. Now, what? Why exactly we have to teach them the upskilling part of you know the technologies might be or non-technical aspects, because the you know the academics which they are having right now, so they are these people are thinking that our academics are enough for enough for us so that we can you know uh, get placed into a particular job role in a particular company. But to be frankly, so these companies are not looking at their academics right now. They are looking at you no know, the you know apart from the college academics, what exactly they have done out of their colleges, right? So now, if you want to learn something, where exactly you're going to learn? No, not from your college. Obviously, you know you are leaving your four years of time or three years of time in your colleges, and you're not able to showcase what exactly you can do, right? So now, all those particular people, and mostly the Taiwan people, can get placed easily because you know the concepts will be easy and you know, familiar with those people. 
but the real problem lies at tier 2 and tier 3 college people right so for these particular people we have concentrated on those particular people where we are giving them a proper industrial training with project based you know mentorship programs for those people with certifications so this will help them to understand and you know give uh, much more opportunities for those particular people because the curriculums which we are creating they are catered from you know industrial experts and we are giving those particular you know curriculum for those people so this will help those particular students to come out of this comfort zone and to learn something and to get you know landed in those particular job roles which they are you know they want to get uh, get in so this is how no that's that's really interesting so before this podcast i was looking at the courses that you guys offer and you know you definitely you guys had the typical like pro tech courses on every uh, niche that is possible right but in addition to that you had a lot more uh, other type of courses as well so so tell us about that story so how did you guys come up with that okay we are going to offer these courses and we are going to offer uh, like you know this kind of college goers right so how does that uh, conversation goes So basically, you know, previous uh, I used to work in you know me and uh, the founder. We used to all work in you know different sector, tech sector. So we found out that you know initially there are few programs which people will mostly look into. Let's say that you know it might be a data science, might be you know data analysis, you no know, web development. No, only this kind of courses are coming up in you know uh, you know in the light. But there are other technologies where you know most of the people don't know what exactly they have to learn. No, they don't know about this. I can't know the into their academic zones. Now, what made us think is that you know, let's say that you know, if I am from a tier tier three college, obviously there are people who will be you know who want to learn something new. You know, obviously, you know there are uh, you know thousands of jobs are vacant right now still, but nobody knows about it. You know, until unless we are not learning about that particular technology, how come you know we can get placed into those particular companies? Right. Firstly, start learning about. You know, firstly, I want to learn about that particular thing. Where are the opportunities, and what sort of technologies are there? So, until unless if I'm not able to notice those particular things, I won't be able to you know address what the students might be, the college people from tier two or tier three. So obviously, if they are from tier three, obviously they don't know about the how exactly you know the technologies are evolving or that the companies are evolving, right? So this is. Uh, This is what made us to think that you know we have to give this particular technology for this particular people. Now let's say that there might be people who will think about you know guys, I want to get into a web development role. Okay, and there are few people who will think that only want to learn about Java. And there are few people who will think about you know I want to get into you know chemical department. Might be I want to get into uh, a medical coding department. I might want to get into a non tech you know a non tech role and all this. For those particular people, they will deviate themselves and they go into you know various departments, you know various places. You know, if we create a particular community where all the people can come up here and they can learn what exactly they are looking for, so it will be easy for them not to go into separate ways the way they can learn each and everything at a one particular single point. This is a one-stop solution for all the learners and you know the people who are looking for you know the freshers. I could say that. Okay. Right. So that will be easy for them. Right. makes sense but you know even i think even you would agree that you know this space is very competitive right uh yeah <laughs> i would definitely agree for that right and the barrier to entry is really low right um it it takes uh, uh only thing because you know if we want to enter into the market people should get to know us because there are you know bigger players in the picture we they will give us a chance we don't know all the people might think that you know this is the you know that some x companies already over there and you all get a but you know when it comes to you know understanding there's a complete different fields where you have to go into it you know right. like that i'm providing a mentorship program for those particular people so obviously there is one thing that you know we are teaching you something out of all this people okay right. well you know there are sectors where you know they'll divide all the programs and they'll give it on a different places and at our place it is a one stop solution where you you know if you're taking one particular domain so you learn on that particular right On a com on a complete phase, not on a particular you know a topic or something like that. No, it's a complete you know uh, learning learning part. Right. No, makes sense. Uh, and you know, uh, so how is your course developed? Is it developed by in-house teams uh, of expert, or do you guys hire uh, outside consultants? No, not outside consultancy, but we do hire people from the industries. 
Architects, the principal architects from the different companies or might be those on the top most level people. So we'll contact them. Okay, and we'll, you know, make the, you know, uh, curriculum from those particular, what exactly a student have to be learned in order to get placed into a particular company. So from there, we'll get the, the curriculums and we'll set up those and we'll make sure that those particular people who have created those curriculums, they'll take the classes. Because, you know, until unless an industrial mentor is coming, and he'll be teaching you those particular processes and it will be, you know, a very much difficulty for you to understand. But let's mm-hmm. say that there's a lot of difference in a working profession and a professor. The professor, what exactly he does is, you know, he knows how to, how exactly teach the academics of. Okay. And a working professional knows how exactly to deploy a project. Right. <laughs> Not two different parts of it. Yeah, uh, and you know, I, I agree with your statements, but again, these are the things other people are also trying to solve, and in, in a limited extent, they are doing it. <laughs> Depends upon, like, you know, which platform are we talking about. Yeah. So, what's your secret sauce? Like, why should we leave all the established players as, as the end consumer, right? Why should I leave all the established players who have a lot more variety, who have a lot more, you know, uh, proof and uh, pursue course with uh, Adveda? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So why? Because you know, as uh, you know, so you know, and we are talking this, you know, so called X factors of the companies, X factors of the companies. What exactly happening over here? These people are charging, you know, pay more than what exactly person can pay. Okay. So in the, in the initial time, you know, the initial talk, I have told you that uh, you know we are concentrating on tier two and tier three colleges, where you know there will be a lot of financial constraints for the people. You know, they'll come from the you know economical background and all this. Now, let's say that, you know, a program is, which is, you know, all the people are selling at 20,000 or 30,000. Let's say that the same curriculum, which is curated by the industry mentors, if I'm giving the same curriculum, at a price of, you know, very low, low level. No, no, the chances of, you know, uh, you know um, acquisition of a particular customer is high. So this is how, this is what made us think that, you know, if a student want to learn something, they know they won't be able to pay, you know, higher pricing, you know, let's say that. If I'm from a middle class family, no, below middle class family, and you know, I'm eagerly waiting to learn something. Okay, obviously, I think that you know, if I want to learn and I have to pay this much of a lot, then it will be impossible for me and my family to pay that. Now, let's say that you know, if I'm giving a lot of that particular price, let's say that the pricing is of 30,000 rupees, and if I'm giving at you know, 10% of it, obviously, you know, it will show much interest towards you know, learning for that particular person. That what made us to go into a market where you know, people can learn actually something. With the same curriculum which this big players are no that's completely agree and you know trust me uh, uh, i have uh, uh, i've been in your industry so trust me i understand right so and this is what uh, uh, was happening to my niche as well like you know there were people who were uh, selling courses for 30 40 50k 80k right uh, and then we said, okay, we'll give them at the 10% of that. And I, I looked at your pricing before this podcast and it kind of makes sense. You guys had three tire pricing. Like one was unsupervised. There was like partially supervised and the completely supervised. Yes. I, I agree with that. But you know, what worried me back then and still worries me about, you know, this approach is just uh, pricing the product at bottom, right? Because, you know, I'll say, okay, 10%, right? Uh, let, let's, let's pitch the product as 10%. Then what is going to happen is six months, eight months down the line, somebody else is going to come in and they will say, let, let's pitch the product at 8%. Then somebody else is going to come again. They are going to say, let's pitch the product at 5%, right? And so... That kind of leads to a scale where, you know, if you are charging, say, 5,000 rupees or 3,000 rupees, like, why somebody else can't come in and say that, you know, I'll charge one and five, oh, 1,000 rupees and provide the same curriculum? Like, how would you compete to that? So, basically, what exactly happens is, you know, uh, the pricing which we have right now. So, what made us think about, you know, keeping at this particular, you know, obviously, you know, as a tech firm, you know, we can give, go at a, a minimal price. No, when compared to those particular people, right? So we have come to a bottom level where you no, know, you can stop over there itself because you know if you want to get you no know, uh, get lesser, then your quality will decrease. Okay, you now that quality which we are providing, that's a you know that's uh, the minimum level where you can stop at. If you come lesser than that, then you will mess your quality over there. That is the only thing because until unless if you come you know as you already told, if you come lesser for that. You, are, you know, you won't be able to get you know, particular mentors, you know, who exactly you're trying to get. Okay, so that is a major thing. You know, until unless when you're getting a proper mentor, yeah. then you know, there's a new use of, you know, having a particular brand or, you know, having a particular company over there. That is a 
no makes sense but wh- how would what will be your argument right to to someone who's saying like i can get this this stuff for free on youtube or i can go to demi and get it for 500 right i have like 500 yes as as right no 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 when i'm talking about you know this you know initial this i right tell you this that a bit of videos of a particular domain you know which is you know divided into very few parts let's say that you know if you someone wants to learn about web develop okay so these people have to go to html css javascript mongodb you know express js and all this thing right so we are giving at a price of you know a very minimal price where this you know companies are doing what exactly they are doing is two minutes of video or three minutes of video or this sort of videos now which are part of videos right so they have you know uh, trimmed it and they're selling it for 450 or 550 or 700 rupees or something like that but here you know when you combine you know when you uh, combine all this particular you know the so called videos the trimmed videos in one particular place the pricing goes higher than what exactly we are so people don't see that in a combined way but they only see that acha i'm getting a video at this particular price only i'm very happy for that yeah uh, that is a, a typical behavior I, i understand and i understand your point of view as well um and uh, yeah thanks for clearing all these doubts you know i i just wanted to understand you know how you guys are approaching this problem because i myself have struggled with these issues right because uh, you you need to realize as to right you know where is your line right because when somebody is well, no, most of the times people might say that you know right, right this much and you know your you know, the cost is you know very low and you know you're charging at this price also you know i would love to go over there so obviously you know uh, this clients will really come and then you know really tell us this thing so i you know we have to come with a solution for this particular thing where So people have to know that the difference between the lowest pricing which they are providing and the pricing which we are providing, because there are two different, uh, you know, aspects where you can learn. Right. So that is the you know whole thing of you know understanding all that. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, so so tell us about the numbers, like how many students, how many users. Tell us a little bit about that. So we do have at least you know ten thousand users till date. Right. Okay. Ten thousand plus, like since, since you started, right? Yeah, since we started. and when when was that? Uh, it's in April nineteenth, two thousand twenty-three. Two thousand twenty-three, right? So I know Ed uh, Ed Vida did a remarkable job. Like you guys uh, grew really quickly initially, right? I was reading some articles on that as well. Oh. So yeah, so in the last one year, yeah, like, I- like in the last one year, you guys have acquired somewhere around ten thousand students. Yes. Okay, and how many of that is paid? All are paid students. All of the all of them are paid students. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. That's really interesting. Yeah, so that's the kudos to you guys, right? Uh, so, so you, yeah, you guys have been in this space for one year, right? Yes. Just one year. So what's your secret sauce, right? How are you able to scale this much work where other people are not able to do? Uh, so the only thing which made us to be consistent is, you know, uh. all the time you have to be you know changing according to the the industry standards and right. then unless you are not changing to the industry standards you will struggle over that particular period and at the same time you know what exactly a customer needs you know i know obviously a come you know if a student comes and he will tell that you know, i want to learn this particular thing now until unless you are not making him understand that you know what exactly they have to learn in order to pursue their career you know until unless they have to career road map so obviously they are not able to learn something so what we do is so we take a counseling part for those particular people and we'll you know make them understand you know what exactly they have to okay and this you know this part which we have went for colleges also we have which we have tied in more use from those particular colleges and this made i you know us you know to get uh, acquired more you know customers and you know i could say this students for us you know the way you make them understand you know what exactly you're providing for those people and how exactly this is going to be helpful for those particular people right You know, let's say that you know there are plenty of you know attend fields right now, which they are you know uh, connecting with the students and from the colleges and you know all these people. Until unless your approach is you know understandable by the students, you no, know, obviously they are not going to come for it. Right, absolutely. And you know, uh, one of the things that I always uh, uh, tell you to fellow entrepreneurs who want to enter the attend field, right? And right now, if I give you like a rough estimate, twenty percent, twenty to twenty-five percent of the people I speak to or or mentor uh, or interact with, twenty uh, to twenty-five percent of them want to enter the ad tech space, right? And uh, 
one of the things that I tell them that initially when you start, right, 100% of your leads are going to come from the paid sources, right? But over the years, you must be decreasing this ratio, right? So initially, 100% is going to come in. But one of the biggest uh, flaws that I see at tech making is not steadily decreasing uh, uh, the, the level of leads they are coming from the paid sources, right? Or paid media. Um, over the time, you need to cultivate certain uh, methods where your cost of customer acquisition, uh, like that, like, yeah, like the variable cost is almost zero, but obviously there's always a fixed cost attached with this, right? So, so what would you say? Like, how, how are you guys handling this thing at, uh, at Veda? Okay. So yes, obviously when you are told that, you know, the paid sources which we tell this, right? So right. when you want to acquire a particular target audience, you have to reach, you know, uh, to a particular set of people. Okay. And that is highly impossible when you're trying to do it from, you know, through a, you know, a sources, whichever, whatever you have. Now there are other marketing resources. Most of the people doesn't know how exactly they have to go for it. Right. Now, you know, there are mediums, you know, which we use for social platforms and all this thing, right? So this social media platforms will help, you know, as in my personal terms, I would definitely tell you this. Social medias help me a lot to acquire more, you know, uh, most of the times. Because, you know, it made me a you know, cost cutting where I know I can, you know, uh, spend less or amount and I can get, you know, more clients. Okay. So why? Because, you know, the most of the times, you know, as I already told that, you know, my clients are students basically. So these people mostly come from, you know, social, uh, social media. And my whole, you know, my whole target is will be on social medias where, you know, uh, connecting colleges, might be sponsoring this, you know, colleges and, you know, getting into their WhatsApp, you know, getting their WhatsApp groups or the flyers, whatever we are having. Okay. Because the college fest is the major reason which, you know, we can get more clients. Okay. So that is a major thing which made us, you know, get into a bigger space. You know, until least, you know, let's say that I don't have any particular data and if I want to get into a particular college and if I want to swipe out. So obviously what I'll do is, I'll sponsor that particular college in the first place. And later on, I'll tell that, you know, I have sponsored this and this is what we are we are doing. And that is that is how, you know, we have, uh, you know, make them interested towards a particular brand. And people started coming for us, which have, this is a particular brand, you know, which we have heard is already from our colleges. And at the same time, the cost cutting for the, this marketing part is where, uh, which led us is, the instead of this, you know, uh, we started burning a much amount uh, through ad spends, which were whatever we have done through, you know, Google ads, uh, either way, you know, I could say the social media platforms. And now we started getting, you know, more sort of leads from, you know, Instagram and LinkedIn. So this is the two platforms where we majorly got this thing. And the third one, uh, I would definitely say that uh no sponsoring this is no tech faces and all this this is what made us get you no know, more clients you know to acquire more clients that is right really interesting and you know instagram and linkedin absolutely makes sense so so tell us about tech sponsoring right because it, it it's a risky feed right because you have to put in money up front right yes there is no guarantee whatsoever whether you will even get your uh money's worth of clients right and uh, one of the challenging aspects of that is uh, it has a cascading effect, right? So you sponsored the event uh, a year back, right? No, because of that, after a year, you are getting a client because that guy heard about your company a year back, right? Yes. So, so how do you measure the money that you are spending on sponsoring college fests and similar events? How do you measure the ROI on that? So basically in ROI, what exactly you're doing is, so let's say that, you know, the acquisition which I am making to acquire those particular clients. Okay, let's say that you know, if I'm you know, sponsoring a particular tech fest, okay, so I want a number of people, you know, I'll calculate on myself. Like, let's say that, you know, I'm investing of something around, you know, uh, 1 lakh. Okay, if my return have to come, so I have to get at least, you know, let's say that my pricing is of 5,000 rupees which I'm selling at. Okay, so I need at least, you know, uh, I could say that 30 people, you not know, to, to get a return. Right. So let's say that on an average, how many students will be there in each and every year? So let's say that, you know, for each and every college, there are five different departments and each and every department will be having two sections. And each and every class will be consisting of 40 people. Okay, out of 40 people into five departments, 200 people or 400 people, whatever the count is. Now, out of these particular people, I have to get only 30 people 
which are spent on those particular no if i am getting a 30 30 people at least then you know the uh, you know whatever i have invested i'm getting it back and obviously there is one thing in those particular you know college is that if a particular student is doing one particular thing obviously the other person comes hey man i want to do this particular thing you know uh, could you be you know uh, could you get me signed up so this is what you know we have to uh, you know make them interested towards what exactly we are talking and what exactly we are showcasing in their you know event so basically we are doing marketing over there by you know sponsoring the title event or might be the industrial partner or something like that. so this is how now the whole concept comes at you know how exactly we are you know uh, manipulating this particular you know i would say this manipulation of you know uh, for to understand the theory this is right you know absolutely in terms of marketing uh, i like you know the term manipulation has a very negative connotation attached to it right <laughs> and um, you know one of the things that i say to my sales guys is that you know as a marketer we are in the business of manipulating people's emotions and a lot of people take offense to that but my answer to it if you are providing them a good product at the end of the day that manipulation is a good thing right you can manipulate people to drink uh, you know coconut water or okay karela juice right so if you are manipulating them for that it's a good thing if you are manipulating them for to smoke cigarettes obviously that's a bad thing that's a bad thing right? right so that's pretty much it so yeah please say so you you are in manipulating you you are saying something right so you know when we try to you know uh, if i want my roi to be you know increasing no obviously you know as a marketer i want you know whatever the investment i am doing you no know, i want my returns on it right but at the same time what sort of you know the percentage i am getting it back so that is a major thing which i have to be answerable for the particular company right so at the same time the budget which i'll be taking at this so i have to look after you know what what uh, how many you know the acquisitions i will make according to the customer okay so let's say that you know if i am in as i already told you if i am investing this much of amount so i should get you know after you know, the spends of whatever i have spent in uh, spent on a particular event so how many people are you know it will be interested on same particular day you know if i am investing it because you know later on if let's say that you know after the 10 days or 12 days whatever the investment i have done if i am not getting those particularly obviously i have to be answerable for that you know it's not about one year it's about 10 days only because you know the returns are most important thing for a for a you know, company for a organization right so what i do is so my concentration would be on the particular person who have approached for me and i have approached for that particular guy okay and i'll tell you know up front that you know i need this many number of people to be taken you know i i want you people to you know uh, promote my brand in your college so later on this particular people will showcase you know their interest towards you know they obviously as a student they want to learn something right so they'll showcase that interest towards this particular thing acha i want to come out and i want to do something so i'll do this so obviously as a student they won't be having this ideology also in yet that i if i want to do this what exactly i have so what we'll do is so we'll you know uh, we'll take the clients details and all this thing and we'll talk to them you know we'll you know discuss with those particular people and we we'll appoint a campus ambassador for that particular college and that particular campus ambassador will help us to acquire more particular people so this is how you know we can you know get our you know uh, returns what exactly we have invested well said right amazing strategy there i i must say so what is the typical targets like how many events do you uh, try to sponsor in a year for instance so depending upon you know the way we uh, want our revenue to be increased so that is that is the major thing okay so let's say that you know as you already told no i will i will definitely tell you this no once if i spend my marketing budget on a particular uh, college or mind be a technical fest whatever it is so what exactly is happening over there right so i am getting my clients after a year of thing like you know the obviously let's say that a particular person is from a final year or a third year person so obviously i what exactly i need you know from that particular person i need the other person to be coming you no know, the other person will be asking that you know bhaiya aap kaha se kiye right so i know that particular person will tell that you know if my product is you know well good enough so obviously he will tell that you know i have done from here you can take a program so obviously my you no know, returns are getting you know pretty much high each and every time according to the year is getting changed so this absolutely absolutely where is it so it's the rapid fire round time are you ready ram yeah sure definitely awesome uh, so what's your favorite marketing tool uh, i could say that 
no cool i will text because i know i could definitely see the monetization over there <laughs> nice one uh, name one book that has greatly influenced your career uh could say that uh, mm, secret right now nah, good good choice what's the best piece of advice you have ever received never have a plan b yeah. what got that name this was my best advice which i have got right because what in this you know if you are not having uh that that i already told you this right you know if you think that if you are having a plan b that means your plan may be fail be a sir right so only yeah there's some merit to it okay now what's the best thing about adveda so i could say that you know people can upskill themselves according to the industry standards which they want to get settled in their careers that is the best thing which they can have what is the worst thing about adveda me <laughs> nice answer uh so in one sentence what advice would you give to an aspiring marketer so never stop learning you know because in the concepts are coming you know really uh, i could say that they are developing you know each and every time yeah so if you marketer start learning each and every time until unless you think that it is enough because marketing is not what enough it's about learning each and every time right well said so ram thanks a lot for coming on this podcast and sharing your thoughts and insights uh this uh, podcast is a must for anybody who's planning to enter the tech field uh thank you so much for having me on this podcast and i'm really happy that you know i've shared my insights also and at the same time you know to be frankly this as i already in the, told you in the first place this was my first podcast which i have you know been in so i'm really happy for that you know to sharing the insights of what exactly the marketer should be having and how exactly you know the thought process should go through a company's perspective so that is a right you know i'm really happy to share that and it was really insightful um you know i think you have learned in 3 4 years what uh, what it took me to learn uh, what it took me a decade to learn so kudos to you see because you know i don't think so that because you know you no know, each and every time you know if it talk to other person obviously we'll think that you know the other person have done something you know uh, more than us so obviously i would definitely tell you the same thing that you know i, have, I should learn something from you also Yeah. <laughs> I wish I, I wish it was true but anyway thanks a lot for coming on this podcast thank you so much for having me well folks what a ride it has been with ram kumar from his early days as an engineering student to leading ground breaking marketing strategies ram's journey is nothing short of inspiring to all our listeners thanks a lot for joining us today don't forget to share this podcast within your network and as usual don't forget to like share and leave us a review this is your host avinash tripathi signing off catch you the next time